um, barbell raises. Every week, the barbell, you use the same weight, but you're going to do more repetitions. Got um, it. Yeah. I like that. How are you feeling with that rep? With that, with yep. feeling getting Fine. stronger? Yeah, I think so. Great. That's good. That's another reason why we want to increase that protein. So we're building that lean muscle tissue. It's good to build as much lean muscle tissue as possible. Um, every time you get older, you lose muscle and you lose bone density. Your ligaments get weaker. My aunt, she literally just fell and broke her hip. So that's super bad news. So right. I'm honing in on my parents because they're getting around that age too. They're, they're going to do resistance training and you know, it's because people stop working out and being active and they prioritize their health less. So as you get older, you will notice, just add, add up, just throwing this out there, like your basal, resting basal metabolic rate, meaning the rate that where your resting calories will start to decrease because what happens is your muscles go away. So then it replaces by fat. So basically what's happening is if you have more fat than muscle, you won't have a strong engine to just burn calories at rest. So therefore you have right. less and less and less food. So I think it's incredible that you are adding this resistance training. It's going to do your body amazing. Adding that extra protein is going to help you build that nice muscle tissue, strengthen those ligaments, strengthen those bones in order for you to increase your metabolism, being able to eat more later on, but also just being safe, you know, and functional all uh, as long as you can. Cool. What, uh, what's, what, what's new, Chris? What's going on? Anybody, any wins? How's your marathon training? I'm not running as much as I should, but. <laughs> cool. Is the marathon still going on? Yes. October 31st. I'm, I've already signed up. So. Excellent. Excellent. All right. Well, tell, tell us your running schedule because long distance is very different than CrossFit. Right. Lasts a long, lasts a long wow. time courses 15 to 20 minutes yeah i was talking to my coaches at crossfit and they said they don't even train they just wing it as you get there and go that's <laughs> not gonna, very smart yeah i'm not i'm gonna do a little more than that though <laughs> yeah okay so just giving you a heads up yes you can do that however you might be setting yourself up for injury and I, I did CrossFit and coached CrossFit for seven years. I still do, but online more so. And I highly don't recommend doing that. However, I, did, I didn't have to run as much whenever I trained because I did a lot of CrossFit. So just know that your body with all the stuff that you're doing is keeping you in shape to run and do things like that. So it would be different if you know an average Joe just started running a marathon, you are in way better shape to run it. You're winging it. Yeah. However, I don't recommend you winging it just because your body needs to get the reps. Yeah. You know what I mean? Get rid like your feet need to get acclimated. Your hips, just just the the repetitive movement of just running on concrete. All right, what's up, Joe? How are you? Is Autumn with you, or are you solo today? Solo. Okay, cool. Um, I sent you a new meal plan. On oh yeah. Yeah. Nice. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Getting, all, getting all the protein. Good, good, good. We were just talking about the importance of protein in building muscle. Awesome, yeah. guys. You guys have any wins to share? Basically, Rob right now is on a breakthrough call, so he's going to be a little bit late. So oh my um, and he's, anybody want, else want to share? <laughs> um, am I on mute? No. Oh. Uh, yeah, I mean, I had my lowest weigh in today. So that's always good. Awesome. You're just crushing it, Joe. You've been losing consistently <laughs> about three to four pounds every single week. Yeah. I, uh, he set a goal for six months to lose 40 pounds and he's already reached that <laughs> and you're not even halfway through. Yeah. So we're going to tack on 25 more pounds. That's right. That's right. Yep. Yeah. I hope, uh, I hope to get there that if I, if I actually get to, that goal that we've set that'll be my lowest weight ever since probably high school wow that's yeah. awesome 
And yeah. you're going to look a lot different too. You're going to be a lot more muscular, just like the mountain, right? Man, that'd be nice, wouldn't it? Good, good. All right, guys. So you guys give me a thumbs up if you guys can see my screen. Excellent. Excellent, Joe. All right, cool. All right. Uh, Rob got here, so he can join us. I'm excited. Okay. We have a really awesome one for you. Love this one. This one's super important. All right, Rob. Cool. All right. We're going to get freaking rocking. All right. So today we're talking about supportive environments. Supportive environments. So we're influenced by the environments we live in. So do you create or allow environments that support you or are you the product of environments that pull you down? So create an environment that helps you. What's around you strongly shapes your behavior. So if trigger food is near you and conveniently available, you're probably gonna eat it eventually. Your environment can powerfully shape your choices and your willpower. So it's hard to sustain an environment where there's constant temptation for you. All right, so we're gonna go over three different environments. There's three different core environments that influence us and they can either support in our endeavors or pull us away from where we truly are wanting to be and trying to be. So you choose your environments. So we want to make sure we're choosing those environments wisely. So everything in your life, you either create or allow. So the three environments that influence you is going to be, the first one is yourself. So your thoughts, your ideas, your concepts, your knowledge, your feelings, your passions, your values, and then the second one is your physical environment. So what is directly around you? What is in your physical environment? And then the third one is your relationships. Who is around you? Family, friends, colleagues, mentors. So first you influence yourself. So your feelings, do you feel confident? Do you feel empowered? Are you feeling strong and good? What are you passionate about? Like those are all things that are going to influence your behavior. And then what are you telling yourself? What's the narrative that's going on in your mind that's influencing you? Is it positive self-talk? Is it, you know, I love my body. I'm the best. I'm an amazing person. I'm a fit and healthy person. Or is it negative self-talk? I hate my body. I hate eating healthy. I can never lose weight. I suck at meal planning. I never have time. I'm not good enough. So the narrative, there's always a narrative going on. We have to, it's up to us to consciously take control of what is, is being said. So change your negative self-talk. Identify whenever it's happening. Because we're, we're all subject to it. Oh, why'd I do that, man? You know, we're all subject to that. So the first thing is identify when it's happening and create a new dialogue, a new meeting and identity for yourself that you're proud of. So who is this future you? What do they look like? What do they say to themselves? Like be thinking about that. Your words matter. Words matter. So your language absolutely matters. So speak to yourself like you would speak to your child or someone that you really love and care about. If you wouldn't say it to them, then why would it be okay for you to say it to yourself? Create more I am statements. Those, the I am words are so powerful, so powerful. So that's one of the reasons it's really important for you guys to, to use those daily affirmations. When you say those enough, you reprogram the way your mind works and how you think about yourself. So super important. You define yourself, what you say about yourself, whatever it is, what you're saying about yourself, you're right. So be aware of what you're saying about yourself because you're going to reinforce it through your actions, through the energy 
that you put off to other people, you're going to reinforce whatever you're saying about yourself. And then your relationships. Who are you surrounded by? Colleagues, mentors, friends, family members, pets. Like who are your relationships with? And then how do these influence, how do these relationships influence you? You know, are you around food pushers? What are their habits? Do they drink or party on the weekends? Do they eat Chinese food pizza every day? Are they supportive of your fitness goals? Do they want to eat unhealthy and ask you to join in? Do they laugh at or judge you when you talk about your goals? Like these are all real things. So this brings us to, to the next step of edited or, or auditing your relationship. So personal example of especially like the lifestyle I was living before I got locked up, I knew that I was going to have to eliminate a lot of people from my life. People that just wanted to party and waste their life on using drugs or getting drunk had to eliminate that as a, a non-negotiable. So as you're going through your journey, you're gonna have to figure out, you know, what are your non-negotiables gonna be? And, uh, and sometimes we can, we can have a, feel a sense of loyalty to somebody, especially maybe if it's somebody that you've been friends with for a long time. But if there comes a point in time where you have your goals, your vision for yourself, and you just aren't aligned with somebody and every time you're around them, they cause you to, to move away from what you want for yourself. Sometimes it, it, it's time to, to audit that relationship or edit that relationship. So I wasn't going to risk being around that environment uh, that, that led me to the place I didn't want to be anymore. I wasn't going to risk it. I didn't want to go back to prison. So who might you need to remove from your life or from your inner circle or how might you need to edit that relationship because sometimes you're in a, in a spot where you might not be able to eliminate it but you can you can edit it you can edit that relationship so let me know if you guys have any questions on that then your physical environment so what is what does your kitchen look like are you going to the drive-thru what is your desk what does your work area look like do you have snacks and things like that accessible to you that aren't serving you, that you should maybe move out of that area? Same thing in your kitchen. Do you have trigger things in your kitchen that aren't serving you? Same thing at work. You know, what is the work space looking like? Is there a way you can make some tweaks and changes to it to, to set you up for more easily success? And then, so how might you improve your surroundings to support your fitness goals? Some ideas to try. So making the right actions easy. Keep healthy snacks within sight. So if you, in your office area, you normally have high calorically dense snacks. Let's look at swapping those out with fruit and things like that, that you could still eat, but they're going to be way less calories. <laughs> Or if you work from home, leave the food in the kitchen, not around your work environment for you to snack on. So you have to make more of a conscious decision and conscious effort when you're doing things. And then having healthy options prepped and ready for when, if you're at the, you're at the office and they got the free pizza, the free donuts, that you've got something so you're not hangry and, and more likely to make a decision that's not going to serve you. And then use a schedule. So set reminders to drink water, plan your grocery shopping day, plan your meal prep day, choose the restaurant you want to go to, look at the menu before you go. And again, this comes into our conversation we had before about having your, your calendar laid out, having your template of things that need to be done in the morning, afternoon, evening, put them on repeat. So just help better set you up for success. Have that skeleton in there of when you do what, it'll really help. So reduce and eliminate temptation. So leave the room when there's free pizza at work. Keep cereal or trigger foods out of the house. Put protein bars on the top cabinet or buy them one at a time. That's mine. That's my, my rule I got to put in place for myself there. 
ask for what you want and need. Have conversations with other people, spouse, kids, coworkers, about what you need to be successful with your goals. So if you and the kids go out and eat pizza, please don't bring any back for me. Or please don't buy the trigger foods. So can you please support me and my goals by helping uh, us explore healthy restaurant options? So just different things and conversations that you can have. And again, if there's there's something on your mind that's that's causing you anxiety or stress, and it's a conversation that needs to be had, it's better to just have it. Have the conversation with whoever you need to about whatever you need to talk about. Just get it off your mind, because nine times out of 10, the result of the conversation is not what we think it is, and it's not that bad. So it's better to just do it. And you know what the saying is that your success in life can be measured by the amount of uncomfortable conversations you're willing to have. So just remember that. And then get support. Reach out to your coach. Ask your spouse to help you. Get your kids to participate. Make it fun. Make it a game. So fun family activity to help cook the food. I know a lot of you guys are doing that already, and that's freaking awesome. And then reach out to people in the Facebook group for recipes, ideas, and tips. I know Dorothy Dusty has plenty of amazing recipes, especially amazing desserts. I'm sure she'd be happy to share those. And uh, also Beth and uh, Matt and Callie. They're all chefs and can make some really awesome stuff. And so try a kitchen makeover as far as reducing or eliminating foods that don't support your goals or make those foods inconvenient for you to have access to. And so add foods that do support your goals, make these foods readily available and easy to prepare and use, and then just clean up the kitchen in general. So add kitchen tools so it's a nice place to cook and eat calmly, and then have a conversation with people in your household about what might be helpful and supportive for you. So three ways to change an environment are adding something new, removing something, or modifying something. So group activity time, what is a challenging environment you're in? Why is it challenging? And then how will you add something new, remove something, or modify something? So whether it would be do a kitchen makeover, ask for support, eliminate or edit a relationship with toxic people. So let's open it up here and, and share on that one. Let's go with uh, Chris. Chris's iPhone. Let's start with Chris's iPhone. Hey, man. Yeah, sorry. Uh clicked out there for a second. What was the question? It, what's a challenging environment you're in? Why is it challenging? How will you add something new, remove something or modify something? Oh, uh, you know, work's a challenging environment. Uh, I really like what I do, um, the chemistry and microbiology for the brewery. But you know, there's always somebody who wants to stop by the office and have a beer at the end of the day. Uh, of course, that's, you know, not usually a beer. Um, and it's been, it's been easy to fall into that, you know, cause you want to be social and I want to make friends with the people I work with, but, uh, um, <clears throat> it's, uh, you know, I, I don't, I can't remove that. I can't not work with those people. Um, but I have been able to modify it, you know, by making public my goals and, uh, tell people what I'm doing. You know, I'm not, I'm not drinking, uh, right now, or, you know, I'm trying to lose weight, trying to work out more and I mean, then we can be social about that. That kind of changes the whole dynamic anyway. Uh, we're not just being um, social about the calories we're consuming in the beer. We're like, you know, being social about getting to know each other in a more you know, healthier way. That's awesome, man. That's really cool. That's great. All right, uh, Jessica, how about you? Hi. Um well, I've already eliminated toxic people. So that's, you know, out of the way. <laughs> um, and my husband's kind of on board with the whole eating healthy and my kids are 
getting better with it. <laughs> but um, from other family that come visit, I do need to talk to them more about my goals and like, you know, maybe not bringing ice cream here or like <laughs> making cookies and all this stuff. I mean, there's things we could do that's healthier. And um, I don't know. Yeah, just talk to like my mom when she comes visit or my in-laws. Cause that's when it gets tough, you know, or going out to eat, but planning ahead of time does help. Cool, so your yeah. plan is to have some conversations? Yes, yes, it's needed. <laughs> cool, well, we're, we're gonna be excited to hear your feedback on that. Yes, yes, definitely. <laughs> All right. Dusty, I want to hear from you because I know you have to go soon. Go ahead and unmute yourself. Uh, I think the more challenging for me is that when I cook, I'm still cooking for a family of six and there's only two of us. <laughs> and so, <laughs> so um, I end up with a lot of food. So I have been giving some away, and since I'm not seeing you every day, then I don't uh, give away food to you very much, uh, but uh, working on that and trying to remember, okay, it's great to freeze food uh, so that uh, when it's uh, a day when I need freezer surprise, that there, it's not a surprise when I go there and nothing's there, so that there's plenty of, uh, there's a, a meal um, actually, there now are several meals because I've been trying to be very judicious about uh, putting half of what I fix in there to begin with. Uh, so, I mean, we love leftovers, but there are only so many times that you can have leftovers of the same leftover. <laughs> so, gotcha. But I don't, um, I don't, uh, especially uh, I have been going out a lot to eat. Uh, everybody seems to be having a birthday this month. And um, so I have been uh, worked on really checking out the menu ahead of time. And usually a salad is a pretty safe option. So I prepare a salad dressing before I go. And uh, I don't care if it's their signature dressing. Uh, I'm sorry, you know, their dressing. Uh, I don't want to wear it around my middle. So um, I take my own dressing. And actually I've come up with a pretty nice uh, mustard, honey mustard bacon salad dressing that with turkey bacon that tastes pretty darn good. Sounds good. I have to share the recipe in the group. Sounds good. All right, awesome. How about Jamie? Oh, so the, the most challenging environment is my work environment. And I'm usually only there two days a week. Uh, but like there's usually somebody coming around with donuts and stuff like that. And, and I'm not uh, good at saying no, or especially if I say no, you know, no, thank you. And they, they seem like, oh, come on. Like, uh, okay. But, you know, and I'm just, so I, I, it's, it, I'm, I'm getting more comfortable with, you know, sticking to my no thank you because then they'll be like, oh, we'll just take one for later. So I just, I'm getting, uh, have to get more comfortable with, you know, being, per, you know, steadfast in my answer. Like, no, no, thank you. That's very nice. And, you know, stick to it. <laughs> and then also the ladies in the cafeteria always, you know, bring me breakfast and lunch and, uh, you know, maybe I need to talk to them like, hey, I'm it's really sweet, <laughs> but I'm trying to pack my lunch and stuff like that because I, I feel bad because they seem so happy just to feed everybody. So that's that's the tough part. I just got to get more comfortable in saying no politely. So is that that the plan this next week? Yeah, I was actually my last with this last shift that there's two days in a row. I worked a 48 hour shift and both days there was uh, somebody from different departments bringing around donuts and then, you know, offered multiple times and I said no no thank you nope I'm trying to watch what I eat thank you so much and you know so you know save it for somebody else whatever so I was actually able to you know turn them down and feel okay about it <laughs> that's great that's great that's awesome all right let's hear from Susan 
And my biggest challenge usually is eating out. Uh, so I try and plan ahead. If I know I'm going out, just checking out the menus online before going so I can plan and then plan the rest of the day around that too. Awesome. Love it. All right, Chris Groupie, challenging environment you're in. Why is it challenging? How will you add something new, remove something or modify something? Uh, the most challenging environment is probably at work. Because uh, people are always bringing food and want me to eat it. And pretty much 90% of the time I don't, but it's, it's kind of hard not to cave in every now and then and have a donut. And, but I try to enter it on my fitness pal so it'll all come out in the wash. So. But also a lot of my friends are there. I mean, that's pretty much the only people I hang out with and stuff is at work. And they want me to go to drinking with them afterwards sometimes or and most of the time I say no. <laughs> but it's kind of hard not to, kind of hard to say no all the time. I, I just, I want to be friends with them and want to be around people, so. Got it. So what do you think are some, I mean, with your, with your big goals in mind, what do you think are some, some tweaks you can think of to add something new, remove something or modify something? Uh, I don't think I should go out and drink with them anymore. That's for sure. Cause that, that definitely doesn't make me feel good the next day. <laughs> and, uh, I went out to eat with a friend today and I looked at the menu before I went and I decided what I was get before I went. And so that, that helped a little bit. So what do you think you can put in place to help you stay on path when it comes to getting asked for, for drinks and, and you turning it down? Uh, I just need to have something else to do, something more positive, social what? activity. <laughs> What can you think of that would fit that description? Uh, well, it's usually late at night when they ask me to go, so I should probably just go to sleep instead. There you go. Sounds Sleep sounds good to me, right? Yeah. You wake up feeling, feeling good when you get sleep, right? right? Awesome. So that's, that's the plan this next week. You get yeah. asked, go to sleep. Yeah, just go to sleep on time, eight o'clock. <laughs> there you go. Love it, dude. You're crushing it. Really proud of you, man. Thanks. All right, Joe. Hey, um, I'm kind of like some of the others. Just if I go out to eat, it's probably the most difficult environment um, just because you know, the, there's not a lot of places that put their nutritional info out there and then, or they don't even have it in my fitness pal. And, uh, you know, it's kind of like you, you have said before, you know, even if they do put it out there, that doesn't mean the people in the back are following it, you know, appropriately. So, um, I think really like the best thing to do is just, um, for me is, you know, I, like I met with a client yesterday for lunch and, uh, and we went, you know, he's like, where do you want to go? And I was like, uh, Chili's. Cause I knew that they had their information out there. So we went to Chili's and I sat, I got the parking lot. Like I got there 10 minutes early and I sat out there and looked through their menu online. And I tried to figure out what's the best option, you know, that, that I could, um, fit into my, you know, meal plan and hopefully get reasonably close to my macros for the day. And, um, and, and that worked out, you know, but it's, not every place is like that. So I think just moving forward, like I'll have to see if anybody ever leaves it up to me, I just have to be, even though I've grown up and live in this culture of, well, whatever you want to do, you know, I'm just going to have to be assertive and say, no, let's go here. Cause I know that there will be something there that I can have and, um, and, and it'll fit. And so, uh, yeah, that's about it. Awesome. Love it. I think that's, I think I got around to everybody. Cool. All right. So just some news. So daily accountability. I know you guys might've seen Trammy post that. So just 
a recap at the end of the day, just a daily win, one thing you're grateful for and what your focus is tomorrow. It could be as long as and short as you want. Yeah, it could be as long or as short as you want. We've all got some kind of win that happens every day. We all have something we can be grateful for. All of us do. And we all have a focus for the next day. So it could be just a couple words or feel free to share as much as you want. We'll get you better results. This will get you better results. This is just a higher level of accountability on this. So do it. Looking forward to seeing you guys updates on this. And then just following up, I know I touched on this just a little bit. Has this program like truly helped you guys? And how so? Anyone want to share? Um, I will. Uh, I mean, I think it's very clear that it's helped me a lot because, you know, like I've mentioned before, you know, not only have I lost weight, but, you know, I can tell that it's easier for my body to just function. You know, like my resting heart rate has gone from mid 60s to mid 50s. You know, it's I think it's pretty significant. And, you know, I like Jeremy was telling, t saying before the call started that, you know, I set out with a goal of 40 pounds and I'm two months in and I've already reached that. So now it's time to put it on the gas. So um, I, I think it's definitely been been beneficial for me. And, and then not only that, I think it's um, helped me achieve goals outside of fitness. You know, I want to be a good example for my kids and and. Uh, you know, and I think making healthy food choices and being active, like, has really benefited all of us. My kids like to come in the kitchen and cook. You know, my daughter helped me flip pancakes the other day, and she was so excited, you know. So that's been a fun experience. And uh, as far as the second question, do I know somebody? I, yeah. And, you know, I somebody that I talk with about it, you know, that um, being healthier, and they, they recently signed up themselves. So definitely. Awesome. So yeah, your, your godmother. That's really freaking cool. So yeah, we do have a referral program, guys. If you know somebody that can truly utilize this this group, then reach out to them, make the connection so we can help them. And for any person you bring on board, we'll compensate you for that as well because we want to really grow this based off of bringing people in that really need the help and that you guys care about as well. So just know that if you have any questions about that, be happy to answer those. All right. So let's wrap it up with some affirmations. We're going to open it up to Q and a cool. All right. Everybody ready on mute. All right. Here we go with some good freaking Saturday energy the weekends here. So I'm lovable. I'm valuable. I'm enough. I have all the tools and drive needed to achieve my goals. I have, I have all the tools, the tools and drive needed to achieve, to achieve my, my goals. goals. I'm a winner. I look like a winner. I succeed like a winner. I am a winner. I look like a winner. I succeed like a winner. I'm sharp. I'm enthusiastic. I'm an expert. I'm sharp. I'm enthusiastic. I'm an expert. I'm the best in my country. I'm the best in my industry. I'm the best in the world. I'm the best in my country. I'm the best in my industry. I'm the best in the world. I'm the best. 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 Love it. You guys are freaking awesome. All right. Q&A time. You guys have any questions about anything? Nope, everybody's got everything all figured out. <laughs> uh -huh. All right, well, if there's no questions, then you guys have an amazing weekend. We truly, deeply care about each one of you and want you guys to succeed. Reach out if you need anything. We're here for you guys. We want to really pour into you. So let us know if there's anything we can do for you guys. Have an amazing weekend, and we'll see you on Wednesday. We've got a really good one for you on Wednesday. Cool? Oh.
Cool. All right. We'll talk to you guys later. Cool. cool. Weekend. Thank you. Yep.